There are so many over-the-top Mexican accent stereotypes. I am Nacho, the luchador. But let's see what's at the heart of that so we can work on three problems causing miscomprehension and miscommunication with one of my favorite fall-time movies. Can you guess which one? Two syllables. Coco. <laughs> So, if you have a hard time understanding the Mexican Spanish accent, or you speak it, but when you're talking in English, people aren't getting you, then you're about to learn three tricks that will help. And if pronunciation is important to you, subscribe to my channel to learn a whole lot more and how to master an American accent. People think about how to pronounce words, but that's just the surface. What's behind it? The music behind our words and how we stress them make a big difference. See if you can pick out the stressed syllables in this line. They are as mysterious as they are powerful. Mysterious. The accent on the second syllable. And you can see the syllable stress marked in the dictionary. Look at how powerful has a little mark just before the first syllable. Pow, pow, powerful. Listen to how it's actually the second to last syllable that's stressed for both words in Spanish. Poderoso, misterioso. So a Spanish speaker might say mysterious or powerful or even powerful in English. And with the stress on the wrong part of the word, the listener might get distracted. I missed the last thing you said. Even if you picked out the right syllable, the other problem is you might not be putting enough stress on it. Sounds exactly the same to me. Because if I can't tell which syllable you're stressing, then I can't tell if it's the right one. And your speech also sounds choppy. And this is because Spanish is a syllable-timed language, meaning the length of the syllables are all roughly the same. And to me, it sounds like somebody typing on a keyboard. Nothing in particular sticks out. As opposed to, which is Morse code, more like syllables in English, distinct, long, and short. A rhythm might not necessarily be your rhythm. And Spanish isn't the only language. If you speak any of the syllable stress languages, you're gonna sound like a typewriter instead of Morse code. So even if your pronunciation is perfect, as a listener, I have to work a bit harder to parse out the syllables, words, and phrases because it's a completely different rhythm system. And syllable stress in words in English doesn't change. But we also choose which whole words to stress to mark them as important. So notice the syllable stress and the words that are popping out here. Darkness, darkness, giant, giant, papaya, papaya. And here's a more complex example. He does a couple of songs, the sun rises, everyone cheers. He does a couple of songs, the sun rises, everyone cheers. English has this dance of syllable stress and word stress with reduction, which gives us rhythm. And if you want to get your rhythm right, I've got master classes about syllable stress, rhythm, and many more topics. I do one live for free every month, but it's by invitation only. So if you want in, just sign up to my mailing list below to come to the next one. And as for pronunciation, Spanish and English have a lot of consonants in common, but we need to focus on the little differences between our consonants that make a big impact on our accuracy. For example, we both have the letter R. But listen to how the Spanish R sound is influencing the words in English. Hey, Negrete, Infante! Have you met my great-great-grandson? How would I say it differently? My great-great-grandson? Great. R, R. For an American R, your tongue tip needs to be curled, and it's farther back in your mouth. Right here, in the back of my mouth. But in Spanish R's, your tongue tip actually touches that bump right behind your teeth. Like the word for dog. Perro. Perro. El perro es grande. See if you can notice what's different about your tongue tip between these two other sounds. Ya. Ya. J. J. Y. Tongue tip down. J. Tongue tip up. Don't jack my chain, chamaco. Don't jack my chain, chamaco. Thank. So if you can say, Julia and Yolanda juggle yams and eat yellow jello, then you're good to go. And the most important thing to pay attention to for consonants, if you speak Mexican Spanish or another variety, is the ends of words. The NG sound doesn't even exist at all in Spanish. And it's not N, and it's definitely not N and G together, N, G, mm -mm. It sounds like this. 
nah. And if you can't say it, you might just be dropping the ending. Uh, Whoa, Miguel, can have you fainting on us? <laughs> but I bet you can't get through the day in English without a word that ends in ng. Mm. So instead, pull the back of your tongue up and against the soft palate whenever you see ng. Mm. Well, that's a nice trick. Here's another one. Put your hand on your throat and say the word N-O-S-E. I miss my nose. 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 You should be feeling a vibration in your throat at the end. Zzz. Otherwise, it sounds like S as in snake. And I know it's spelled like that, but you should be pronouncing Z as in zebra. Check for a vibration in your voice box. Nose. 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 Knows. You might even be saying some of your most common words wrong. That, that was a lie. Was. That vibration is called voicing, and it's something Spanish speakers might not know about or pay enough attention to when speaking in English. And it's more important in English because that's where the grammatical information lives, like knowing if something is an adjective or plural or what tense it's in. Voicing is also the problem when Mexican Spanish speakers mix up the sounds ch as in chocolate and j as in juice. Again, just put your hand on your voice box. They wouldn't let me cross the bridge. Bridge. I have an emergency announcement. Emergency. Is it ch or j? Most of these mistakes in consonants don't create the biggest miscommunications, but they just make us stumble a little bit as we're listening. Well, maybe it's not the worst thing. But the next one is, you're about to get the biggest tip about Mexican Spanish accents in English. And if you've found value in this so far, let me know with a little thumbs up or sharing a quick story in the comments below. What do you know about sounds versus letters? Pop quiz. English and Spanish both write only five vowels, but how many are pronounced in Spanish? Five. You see them, you say them, transparent. But how many sounds from these same five letters are in English? 24, 25. Yeah. Around that. So if you speak Mexican Spanish and you want to be understood better, increase the range and accuracy of your vowels. Okay, if I were you, I'm a musician. E, e, e almost sounds like I'm smiling. Not much space here because my jaw is mostly closed and my lips are pulled tight to the corner. This is the sound already in Spanish. Okay, if I were you, if. And of course, my tongue is in the front, as in i. But you should notice that i has my jaw a little bit more open and my lips are completely relaxed. I'm a musician. Musician. Since they don't have i in Spanish, obviously they substitute e. And since we do have both, it can sound a little off. Not quite. Or it can be downright confusing because it could be another word, like eat versus it. <laughs> eat. And we have the same problem when the tongue is at the back of your mouth. See if you can catch them. Don't give me that look. Look. Ooh should be uh. Feel the jaw height and how relaxed or tense your lips are. We put their photos on the ofrenda. Put. Sometimes we call these long versus short vowels. Then we have the fact that there's one sound for the letter A in Spanish, ah. Uh. Say ah. Uh. Notice that your tongue is in the middle, ah. Uh. But in a lot of words in American English, the A sound should be more forward, ah. Uh. You have to have talent to be in a talent show. Tonight is about family. And if your jaw isn't open enough, it might mistakenly sound like eh. For this music is my language. Language. And Spanish speakers might use ah when it's supposed to be uh, as in umbrella. You know, I did all my own stunts. Stunt. And they're almost the same. With one tiny difference. Uh has the jaw just a little bit more closed. Ah, uh, uh, ah. So if Spanish doesn't have a particular sound, sometimes it defaults to ah because it's all there is. And those are just potential problems when there's one vowel. But what about when there are two vowels next to each other? For example, I say fake and take with e and i together, e. But listen to notice how it's just the first one, e, for Spanish speakers. She rolled up her sleeves and she learned to make shoes. It needs an i 
at the tail. She rolled up her sleeves and she learned to make shoes. My dad used to make shoes here. Dante? Dante? Dante, wait up! Come on, Dante. Come on, Dante. Now, pick out the same problem. Something is missing after the O. Oh. She's my great grandmother, Mama Coco. Okay, Coco. Okay, Coco. The U uh is missing at the end. I would say O uh plus U. Uh. Oh. Then her grandkids got roped in. Oh, I can uh, get pressed and roped in too. I give you my blessing to go home. Just please go home. Please go home, okay? When we put two vowels together, we call it a diphthong. So, if Spanish is your first language, think of it as a high five. Don't leave me hanging! And be sure to enunciate both sounds. Keep your momentum going with this video on ah, the sound we just talked about. I'm Accent Coach Bianca, and I'm on a mission to help people understand accents better. See you in the next video. Gracias.